started, the first thing that we have to ask is what is analysis? What is calculus? What's wrong with the rational numbers? Um, as I said in the introduction, uh, I told the story that you've probably heard a hundred times about um, Pythagoras and someone getting killed because he suggested that rational numbers don't, uh, uh, that there are numbers that are not rationals, that, that fractions don't cover everything possible in math. So uh, it's, so I'm going to start now with uh, showing that if you've never seen this, and then we'll talk about what it means a little more closely, what's wrong with um, the rational numbers and what do real numbers add to the, uh, the system. So, uh, and then we're going to um, construct those real numbers and so on, and then we'll move on to uh, complex numbers. So there are gaps in the rationals. Um, or, in other words, square root of 2 is not rational. So just to do this proof, it's, it's a really cool little proof uh, that um, you may have seen before, but we'll just go through it quickly. So uh, I want to, the question is, is the square root of 2 rational. And remember, um, this comes up even in the Pythagorean theorem. If you have a tile or something, a brick that has, it's one, you know, say just uh, one foot by one foot, the distance from this corner to this corner is not rational. So um, what it actually is, is using the Pythagorean theorem, one plus one squared plus one squared equals two. And so the square root of that is the square root of two. That's not rational. That's what we're going to prove. So the question is, can you represent the square root of two with a um, rational number? So the way that this proof goes, just like most proofs, many proofs, is you assume one thing and then prove that, uh, prove a, show a contradiction, which means that your assumption must have been wrong. So we're going to assume that this is irrational. So Let's say that, uh, assume the square root of 2 equals some fraction, p over q, where p and q are integers, and that most importantly that this fraction is, uh, what they, the word is canonical, or that it can't be reduced, so it, it's, in other words, if it's like 3 over 6, then it's actually 1 over 2. So that P and Q have no common factors. Okay, so all, all fractions can be uh, uh, expressed in a form where they have no common factors. That's just what we did in grade school. You have 3, 6, or 2 over 4, and you can reduce it to 1 over 2, okay? So we're assuming that P over Q is already reduced. So with that assumption in mind, let's see what, let's see what happens. So let's just do some math now. Uh, square both sides. Square root of 2 equals uh, P over Q. Square both sides. So that's P squared over Q squared. And square root of 2 squared is 2. And then we're going to take the Q and put it over to the other side. So we have 2Q squared equals P squared, right? We just uh, squared that and then took the and then multiplied both sides by Q squared. So we have 2Q squared equals P squared. Two Q squared equals P squared. Now, this means that P squared must be even because every number is either even or odd. Every even number is divisible by two. Two, four, six, eight, right? So if you have any number that has a, um, that has a factor of two is even. So this means that P squared is even. Now, if you think about 
squared numbers. There are, let's just look at them, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. This one's 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, and so on. Uh, 4 is 2 squared. That's even. That's odd. Even. Odd. If the square is odd, then it means that it's something times something that equals the number. And an odd times an odd is always odd. An odd times an even or an even times an even will be even. So if the square is even, that means that if, if this number is even, then there has to be a factor that's even in it, which means that it's, uh, that the squares, since there's going to be two of them, if it's, uh, say like y times y equals 16, then whatever it is, like what's, let's do a better example, like, um, three times, like 36 is, um, equals 36. So that's six times six and that's two times three. So even though there's an odd factor here, there also has to be an even factor, okay? So if the square is even, that means that P is even. So we deduced that um, P squared is even. P squared is even, that means that P is even. Now, if a number is even, that means that it has a factor of 2. So let's rewrite P. Let, what, what it does let mean? Let P equal 2 times R for some. So let P equal, it has, some, it has 2 as one factor and then something else, okay? So let's just rewrite P as 2R. Let's rewrite this plugging in 2R because P is even. So we have 2 q squared equals 2 r squared. So 2 q squared equals 4 r squared. Let's divide both sides by 2. And we have q squared equals 2 r squared. Do you see where we're going? This is exactly the same as this. We just, did, we just found out that q squared is even. But if q squared is even, then q is even. So we just found out that p is even, and we just found out that q is even. That means that we could rewrite Q if we wanted as some other factor uh, for S as an element. So we could rewrite the original, in the original equation we had, or in the original assignment, we had that P equals, or that the square root of two is P over two. We rewrote P and Q as two R over two S. That means that they have a factor in common, but, we started by saying, we started by assuming that P and Q have no common factors. But when we started with this assumption, just by doing some math, we ended up by proving that both of them do in fact have a common factor. That's a contradiction. Therefore, our assumption was wrong. We started by saying that the square root of two is a, fract is a fraction and we just concluded that it can't be a fraction because if it is a fraction, it leads to a contradiction. So it must be something else because there are no two numbers that will allow this to be true. Okay? That's a very interesting little proof. It's a very cool proof. And it's kind of logically you have to... Uh, it's fun to just think about. But, um, okay. So we've shown that for some reason... The square root of two, the square root of two 
is not an element of the rationals. It's something else. So I want to look a little more at what that means. Okay, here is the link to the first video in this chapter. Here is the link to the previous video. Here is the link to the next video. And click here to subscribe and please join me on Patreon. The link to that is below in the description. Thank you.